Hi folks, and welcome back to Dungeons & Dry Brushing. Today, we're going to be painting the Reaper Stained Glass Golem. For this, I'm going to be using a variety of contrast style paints, just to say translucent paints. I'm going to be using some from the Army Painter, Scale 75, and of course, Citadel. But you can use whatever you have for this. Any of the contrast type paints, especially thinned down, should work really well. Because we don't do loyalty to companies here. Remember that. Not at this channel. They don't care about you. They're not your partner. They're never going to want to meet your parents. Don't be loyal to companies, all right? Moving on, though, this is a fun, translucent model that should be really easy to paint up and a fun creature to add to your collection. This could very easily be something that, you know, springs to life on your players from a stained glass window in a church or a mausoleum, or it could just be a guardian in, say, a glass blower's shop in the merchant quarter. So lots of things to do with it. Let's get started painting. To start with, I'm going to attach the model to my painting handle sideways. I'm not sure if it will help or not, but the idea is for the speed paints to pull evenly on the flat panels rather than running down. I'm starting with the zucchini skin color from Scale 75 Instant Colors. I don't see these paints used as much as other brands, and while I do kind of understand why, I think they're perfect for this project. They have a very springtime, eastery, almost watercolor kind of palette to them. And while that understandably makes them less useful for certain popular grimdark models, they can be great for D&D. Interestingly, I did notice the model is a bit hydrophobic, which surprised me because I had washed it in warm soapy water first. Usually hydrophobia is the result of release agents still being on the model, and a quick wash gets rid of them. So I don't know if this is a quirk of the translucent material or if it's something else. But it's not that big of a deal, just keep working the paint into the corners and eventually you'll be able to make it stick where you want it. The next color on my list is Purple Alchemy from the Army Painter. This is actually a very pink color despite the name. I'm following the same process here and just picking out panels that I think will look good in this color. If you look at real stained glass windows, it's all very bright and cheery, with highly contrasting colors, oftentimes colors that clash pretty badly with each other even. But that's the established aesthetic, so that's what we're going for. Nighthaunt Gloom is next on the list. It's a sort of off blue that leans toward desaturated grey. I mix this about 50-50 with contrast medium because it's so highly pigmented. Most of the armor segments on the night are getting this color, with a few highlight spots reserved for something brighter. I should mention too that you don't have to be too careful about not getting paint on the parts that are supposed to be lead. That's all going to get painted over, so your only worry at this point is making sure those panels get filled in nicely. I do the same thing with Imperial Fist as our last color. Again, it's very highly pigmented, so I mix it down about 50-50 with contrast medium, and then apply it to every panel that doesn't have paint on it yet. So I was debating between whether to use black or a dark silver between the panels as the liner. Ultimately, after looking at some pictures of, of real stained glass and deciding that it would help the colors pop more if there was higher contrast, that is to say a darker color next to them, I decided to go with black. This is Rubber Black from AK, which is a nice matte color that is really smooth and easy to work with. But really any black or dark silver should be fine. I'm just getting a bit of paint on my brush and using the side of the bristles, not the tip, to apply it to all the raised areas. But you do want to make sure your speed paints are completely dry first, in case you have to clean up any mistakes with a clean wet brush, otherwise you risk reactivating your paints. This part of the process takes a little while, but it's also what brings the model together and what gives it that distinct look. So just put your headphones in, be patient, and work on those outlines.
When all of the outlines are done and dry, I just apply a simple coat of medium gray to the base. This one is Dark Sea Gray by AK. And once that's completely dry, I get out some of Army Painter's Strong Tone and apply that in a single layer over the top of the base. That gives us our finished model. That about wraps it up for this one, folks. We got to play around with some contrast paints, get a nice, fun creature on the table for D&D. It has a lot of different uses. If you're thinking this seems like an easy one, a short video, kind of a walk in the park, well, you're, you're right, this was an easy one, but that's because I've got a bigger video coming up next week, and I wanted that extra time in the recording schedule to do a few more things that I wouldn't normally be able to do, so wish me luck, fingers crossed for a bigger video next week. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe, there's always more content on the way, and I'll see you on the next one.